Γεια σας, καλώς ήρθατε, that means welcome to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today I'm going to teach you how to make the Greek style pita flatbreads. Now I showed you how to make the pita pockets in two ways, using the oven method and the pan method, stove top method without the oven. These pita breads are not going to have the pocket inside, so they're not going to be for stuffing, but they are perfect for making sandwiches or you can serve them on a board with your favorite dips or really just anything. They're so soft and pillowy and delicious and they're super, super simple to make and very economical. I swear, you try this one time and you're never going to buy the pita bread from outside again because you just can't beat it. We're going to begin with making the dough. We're going to start with two cups of lukewarm water, a quarter of a cup of whole milk, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, and two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. This is active dry yeast. I'm also going to add a half a cup of the all-purpose flour, and I have not mixed the salt into it because salt does kill yeast. And before I mix up the yeast mixture, I'm just going to whisk together the salt with the all-purpose flour so that way the whisk doesn't get wet. And now I'm just going to whisk together the yeast mixture. And I'm just going to set this aside and let it sit here for about 10 minutes until the yeast is activated. So you'll know the yeast is activated once a foamy cloud appears on the top. Next, we're going to add two tablespoons of yogurt. This is whole milk yogurt, plain yogurt and two tablespoons of olive oil and we're going to add the flour and salt mixture and we're going to let this knead on low speed for eight minutes and then on a higher speed for two more minutes a total of 10 minutes and this is all-purpose flour with two teaspoons of salt all of the measurements are going to be in the description box now don't worry about it if you feel like the dough is very sticky it's supposed to be a very sticky dough we're going to transfer it to a boil a bowl that's oiled with a little bit of olive oil just a little bit a couple tablespoons will do we'll do we're going to we're going to transfer the dough to the bowl and toss it around in the oil a little bit you see it's a sticky dough it's how it should be it's going to create the softest flatbread that you've ever had in your whole life. We're going to cover it with plastic wrap and we're going to set it aside until it's doubled in volume. It's going to take about an hour or so. So this dough rises fairly quickly. It's not like other bread doughs which are dense and take about two hours to rise. If you put it in the warmest part of your house in 45 minutes to an hour, I would say an hour, it's going to double in volume just the way it did over here. And it is a very sticky dough. I also made it using all-purpose flour instead of bread flour. If you don't have trouble finding bread flour, bread flour is best because it's more elastic and it just has a higher protein content. It's going to make a better dough. But this comes out just as good. Use all-purpose flour because bread flour has literally disappeared from the face of Houston. <laughs> At least here, we cannot find it anywhere. Or maybe I'm not trying hard enough. I'm going to transfer the dough, which like I said, is very sticky, onto my work surface that has been dusted with some all-purpose flour. Very sticky, but that is how you want it. Do not panic. We're going to add some flour to it so that way it's easy to work with. But this is what's going to make the pita bread moist and soft and fluffy and just perfect. So I'm going to dust some more all-purpose flour on top. Get some of that stickiness out, not all of it. That looks good. The top is sort of, it's not sticky actually, but the inside is definitely going to be sticky. I'm going to cut this in half and then into eight, eight total pieces. This makes eight to ten pita breads depending on how, how big or small you want them. But I find it easier to cut each portion into four to have a total of eight rather than cutting the whole thing into eight. I can't really eyeball it too well. So I cut it in half and then each portion in half. And I'll just roll each one. You see how sticky it is? I'm just going to form each one into a circle and just use a little bit of flour to help you. Okay, so now what you're going to want to do, they're semi-circular. They don't have to be perfect. Now what you're going to want to do, you're, wanna, you're going to want to get rid of all of the flour that's on your board. Now if you have one of these, I think they're called dough scrapers, they're super handy. I'll link down below. If I forget to link Underneath in the description box, it's always on the web post, on the, on the website where this recipe is linked. So now this, re this recipe moves super quick. So you want your oven preheated to 525 degrees. But of course, you can do these on a cast iron skillet 
or even a nonstick skillet on your stovetop if you want to. The oven just makes things go much faster, so you can do that, and which is the way I'm going to do it today. And then you're going to also want to line two baking trays with parchment paper. You can reuse them. If you have three baking trays, that's even better because you're going to have to reuse them a few times. I always reuse my parchment paper, as you can see. As long as nothing is baked on it with like garlic or olive oil, I just reuse it a few times, um, then I throw it away because why waste? So that's what I'm doing there. So I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil onto my work surface because I don't want to work with any more flour at this point because I want them to be really nice and soft. So just get some olive oil on there. I'm also going to put some olive oil onto my hands to help with the stickiness. Any excess I'll just put on the board, rub it on my hands, and I'm just going to press it out. This recipe right here works amazing as a pizza dough. So one recipe and you can do lots of things with it. So stretch it out into a circle. You could also roll it out with a rolling pin, that's fine too. But this is so easy, why bother? See how easy it stretches out? If, if it happens that you're making this and you're stretching it out and it's shrinking, cover it with a paper towel, I mean not a paper towel, cover it with a kitchen towel, let it rest for about 20 minutes and then go back at it. Sometimes if you overwork a dough that has yeast in it, it's going to be very hard to roll out. It sort of resists and it starts to shrink back in. So if that happens to you, just let it rest a little bit, wash the dishes, whatever mess that, that's been created and then come back at it and it's going to stretch out very easily. So this is what it should look like. Now when I get it onto the baking tray, it's probably not going to be a circle anymore. See? No problem. And you can also stretch it out a little bit onto the baking tray. Let's do one more. Some of the olive oil. Yes. Let me do the other one with the rolling pin. And you're going to want to get some olive oil onto the rolling pin too. Otherwise, it's going to stick. There is nothing like homemade bread. If you want to, if you want to call some friends over and you don't have you don't feel like spending hours in the kitchen or like making a whole meal, make some bread, buy a few dips or make a few dips, get some cheese out on a board and you will be good to go. It's going to be a party in like no time and they're really going to appreciate it and you're going to get to hang out with some people, make some memories. There you go. That's how it is with the rolling pin. Get it on to the baking tray. Now I'm going to pop this tray in the oven. It's already preheated. This is going to bake for about five to six minutes. It really all depends on your oven. It's going to be ready when it's going to start to bubble and get like golden spots around here and there. I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. I'm going to continue forming these and then we're going to, we're going to enjoy this in the end. So they take between six to eight minutes to bake in the oven and they're going to take about five, six minutes on the stovetop. It's up to you which one you want to use. I just find that it's easier to use the oven. If you have lots of baking trays, you can just put two or three baking trays depending on how many racks you have in the oven at the same time so you get this done faster. Otherwise, just reuse the same ones. Let the form the pitas and leave them on your work surface and then transfer them onto the hot trays once they come out of the oven very carefully, taking care not to burn your fingers. If you're serving the pitas the same day and you want to get more color on them, once they're done baking, then you can put them under the broiler element for about 45 seconds, keeping a close eye on them so they don't burn, and then they're going to get more golden on top and they're going to get more of those beautiful marks on top that fresh pita bread from the bakeries usually has. You're going to see once they come out that they're going to be so nice and soft and slightly crisp on the bottom. They're perfect for pizza, like I said, so you can use this pizza dough in any pizza recipe as the pizza dough, as the pizza crust. You can serve these with your favorite dips. Make, make a sandwich out of them, a panini or what, a gyro, whatever you want. They're so delicious. I'm going to go in and take a bite. Mmm, so much flavor. Just amazing. Nothing beats homemade. Call some friends over, share these, because sharing is definitely caring. Make some beautiful memories. Anything that you have left over will keep fresh in an airtight bag in the refrigerator for about a week, and it'll stay fresh in the freezer for like a month if it lasts that long. Bread does not last long, does not last long around here. If you like this recipe, let me know what you think in the comment section down below if you decide to make it. Share pictures with me on Instagram and on Facebook. And if you want to learn how to make the pocket pita, you're going to want to click right here and I'll see you right over there. Yes, sir.